Hey everyone, welcome to today's quick tip. Today I'm going to show you the sand key chart. Now the sand key chart is a little bit tricky, so I'm going to show you a few different examples today on how it works. Now a sand key chart is a flow chart. It looks something like this. This flow chart shows for certain values how they translate across different nodes in a data table. It's typically hierarchical in structure. Uh, this is showing for married people, if you're married or not married, how many people are not married and also have a pet, how many people are married and that have a pet, and how many people are happy, how many people are married, happy, and have a pet, how many people are unhappy, married, and don't have a pet. And you'll see this is lined up with uh, three different layers here. So your different layers, your different nodes in your, your sand key are going to be arranged across your x-axis. Now the thickness of your flows are going to be on your y-axis. And then you also have this color option. I can rem I have three different color options here, but I can remove this. I can remove this. And let's see if I want to see who's happy, who's not happy. Okay, so this is the flow chart of those that are happy. This is the flow chart of those that have a pet. You can see as it's coming down, those that have a pet and those that don't have a pet and those that do have a pet, and that flows into happy or not happy. And then if I'm gonna see married, I can switch this to married. Those that are married are in are blue, those that are not married are in red, and that's flowing into who has a pet, who doesn't have a pet. So it's a way to view hierarchical data and quantities of those hierarchical data. So let me show you how this data tables, how, how they can look. So this married and pet. So what we have is, is married uh, in, in this one column and we have different combinations here. So married has a pet and happy uh, is in this, in this row here. And there's six of those people. There's also another measurement of three people that are married, have a pet and they're happy. There's married that don't have a pet, but are happy. And that's two. There's married that has a pet and are happy. And that's two. And then there's married with no pet and are unhappy. And this is, I'm sorry, not married with no pet and unhappy. And above that was not married, has a pet and happy. Okay, so that, that is frequency. Now that is a way of aggregating the view. And we're seeing the frequency of each of these, kind of like a, a histogram there. Uh, and that was brought in to Spotfire and visualize. Let's do this from fresh with a fresh sand key. I'm gonna do a sand key diagram. I'm going to drag this and move this over here and let me make this a little bit wider and let's go to this data table. Okay. So first I'm starting with married, right? Next I want to add, do they have a pet? And that adds a whole new layer there. And this is doing it by row count, but I don't want to do it by row count. I want to do it by the total frequency. So I'm going to do some of the frequency and that's changing the width right there. And then I'm going to add another one, which is, are they happy? So there's the happy right there. And I can change the order of these so I can make it, uh, let's say who has a pet and then who's married. Now married is here and you can see that labeled with married uh, and, and has pet. Uh, you can see those labels right there. Now let's go back to my Excel table and let's look at another example. This is from a, uh, this is someone who shared their Tinder data on Reddit and what their Tinder uh, sand key looked like was a little like this. And here you can see where they swiped left and they swiped right. You had 3703 right swipes. Out of that, there was 2022 matches, 1681 no matches. Out of that, there was 726 no chats, 1296 chats, and so on and so forth, all into 36 states and no relationships, unfortunately. But you can see 36 states have come out of this Tinder dates. So I went ahead and took this and put this into uh, Excel just to show you the data table. And I made it very simple with uh, all of these combinations. Now, it's not a combination of permutation of each of these uh, different uh, uh, columns because as someone says no, there's no extra value there. So you can't have someone that does not match but then does go on a date. So I was able to build this table that looks a little bit like this, right swipes, yes, yes, yes. Um, and then I was able to put these numbers in on the right here. Now, 
if I visualize this data, it will show on my sand key just yes and no's on the label. So I changed it to say right swipe, match, chat, date, relationship like that. And this is also frequency. So I don't have the individual dates. I don't have the individual matches and interactions, but I do have an aggregate of that. And so I can make this frequency table. So this is another example with the frequency table. I'm just gonna paste this into Spotfire and it's gonna add this data sheet three right here. And we're gonna do this as a visualization as a sand key as well. So now I'm gonna pull the sand key diagram in. I'm gonna put it down here. And let's go to this other data table. And let's uh, it starts with interaction. The next one is matches. So I'm gonna hit plus, I'm gonna add matches. I'm gonna hit plus again, and I'm gonna add chats. I'm gonna hit plus again, and I'm gonna add dates. And then I'm gonna hit plus again, and I'm gonna add any relationships. And the row count, I don't want a row count, I want the frequency here, and I want the sum. You're gonna notice that there's this little gap when you when you visualize the sand key. Now that gap is used to distribute, uh, the, that gap may change across the different, um, the different layers here, the different nodes but it's used to distribute. So now everything kind of came out to no relationship. There was no relationships out of the whole. So that whole gap is put down here at the bottom. So if you're wondering why this doesn't look all the way across, it's because that space is used for, to space between the different flows in the sand key. Now, if I wanna say, okay, well, some of these went on dates, let's go ahead and color this by dates. You can barely see this nice little tiny blue strip here of the individuals that went from a right swipe through a match through a chat and to eventually go into a date okay so that is how i visualize that now if i want i can change this by interactions and you can see out of all the people that interacted who uh, who were the left swipes well the left swipes obviously all made it to no relationship because they didn't go through the rest of this flow here and so i'm able to show that now this all works with markings as well, markings and filters. So it's really nice there. You can see the tool tips popping up. Now let's go ahead and show another data table. Here I wanted to show uh, actually unaggregated data. So I'm gonna put a, a table visualization here. This is uh, some sales data. And the sales data has different sales at different store locations with a customer ID. Uh, little demographics about that customer, how much money they spent in each of these departments. Now, if I tried to visualize a sand key this way, and I go ahead and I put my sand key diagram in, let's go ahead and show my sales data. So store location, maybe I'm gonna show gender next, and then I wanna show, well, I wanna show my departments. If I hit electronics, that's gonna show each of this unaggregated data, all of these individual rows. So. That is not necessarily what I want to visualize. It looks a little interesting here with all these lines, but that's not really what I want to look at. So if I want to look at this by department, what I'm going to need to do is actually unpivot this data. So if you have unaggregated data, you may want to look at this example, and this is how you're going to be thinking about structuring your data with the most important part of this type of visualization. So I'm going to add a transformation. I'm going to unpivot. I'm going to add store location. I'm going to add gender in here. And then I'm going to grab all of these uh, department sales. I'm going to call it department. I'm going to call this sales. And let's actually make this a uh, currency. It'll format that as a currency. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to hit OK. Now over here, OK, well, this is broken because there's no electronics uh, column anymore. But I can put department in. And we're seeing these now all of these department sales. So let me say I want to color this by the different departments. And I want to put this over here. What you're seeing here are colors for the clothing department, electronics, furniture, and how that's going into the Boston sales, Los Angeles, New York, and Seattle sales. So this is showing a row count. But if I want to show the total sales, I'll hit sum there. And you're seeing clothing is the smallest of all of the sales that are happening. Electronics is kind of uh, over there. The toys looks like it's next up, then maybe garden electronics tied. Furniture is where the highest sales are, and that's going into these stores. Now, if I want to go ahead and visualize this by how each of the stores are doing, I can go ahead and color this by the store location. And now you're seeing, okay, this is the split between these departments and the stores. I think that the gender here is just, you know, you're seeing majority female shoppers happening. 
and you're seeing uh, some male shoppers. Looks like about uh, uh, two thirds of the shoppers are female, but it's kind of crowding my visualization. So I'm gonna take this out. I'm gonna remove that and I'm gonna go ahead and blow this up. So now we can see my clothing sales and how that's going to Los Angeles, New York, Seattle. Let's, let's switch this actually. Okay, so now here's all of my four stores. They all sell about the same amount, but they sell across these different departments, okay? So certain departments are doing better uh, than others, and you can see the breakdown across those. So that's how the sand key works. It's a flow chart that's gonna show you the certain values and how that's going through different levels of your hierarchy in your data set. The most important part is how you structure your data. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel. We have lots of quick tips coming out to help you get good with Spotfire. This is part of our Spotfire Mods mini series on visualization mods. Hope you enjoyed it and we will catch you next time.